Simon has, um, I would say, pioneered manufactured home estates as a, an investment sector in the period of just two years. It is the buzzword, uh, it's a youthful industry, and I'd like to introduce Simon Owen to present it for us. I'll just quickly take you through uh, our strategy, um, and particularly focusing on our manufactured home estate business, and I'll also um, briefly touch on, as Chris requested, uh, just on how we've uh, accessed uh, global institutional capital to fund our um, consolidation of the uh, largely unconsolidated manufactured home estate industry. Um, across Australia today, Ingenia um, owns and operates 62 communities. We'll be settling on our next transaction uh, next week, and then we've got another one in the first week of April. So we're growing uh, very quickly. Um, what I'd like to point out, though, is that the, uh, the cash flow engine room of our business is still our 34 rental villages. Um, Ten years ago, these were called village life for a lot of the market, particularly investors called it village death. But we've, uh, over the last um, five years, we've turned around that portfolio and uh, every week it brings in over half a million dollars of cash just through the rent roll that we have across the 1,500 residents. So um, as Robin yesterday from Eureka was talking about the high predictability of cash flow, uh, every week we know we've got half a million dollars of cash flow coming in from that rent roll and our profit margin on that business is over 50%. Um, our key focus at the moment is, is on New South Wales. Um, when I joined Ingenia back in 2009, and it was at that point the ING Community Living Fund, uh, I think we own three or four properties in New South Wales. Um, as of today, uh, we're the largest owner and operator of manufactured home communities and caravan parks in New South Wales. Um, we've recently moved into Queensland where we have two properties, uh, one in Noosa and one on the outskirts of Brisbane. And we've got uh, another dozen or so opportunities that we're focusing on in the southeast Queensland market at the moment. Um, I'll just quickly talk about our strategy in garden villages. Um, and I do have a, uh, uh, some new news to announce today that we haven't previously advised the market. Um, but we're the largest owner and operator. Uh, we employ everybody internally. Um, so the village managers, the chefs who um, prepare the th over a thousand meals every day, they're all employed by Ingenia. The gardeners, they're all employed by Ingenia. So it's a completely internalized business. Um, the residents, and they pay on average $310 a week rent for a 40 square metre apartment. And then if they want the food, that's another $60 a week. That funding comes through from the Commonwealth Pension and the Commonwealth Rent Assistance. So whilst we don't uh, take that money directly from the government, it goes into our residents' bank account and then we direct debit it um, pretty much on the same day. But it gives us you know, very much high predictability of cash flow. Unfortunately, there's no ability to build new rental villages anymore in Australia using traditional building methodology. So if we went and built a brand new rental village, and the demand is there, trust me, um, we'd be lucky to get a 6 or 7% return on our investment. And, and no investor, no chairman of the board of directors is going to applaud me for doing that. So our growth in this business has been either uh, acquiring distressed, poorly run other rental villages, uh, and there's not many of those left to acquire, or it's been organic growth through growing occupancy, uh, increasing rents above CPI, or looking to take costs out of the way we run the business. And that orga organic growth opportunity is going to be largely gone over the next two to three years. Um, <clears throat> one of the key initiatives that we brought in uh, back in late 2013 was um, our care strategy, which is called Ingenia Care Assist. Many of you would know Janine Eagleton, who used to be at Australian Unity. She's led the implementation of that strategy, and we basically partner with local accredited care providers. Um, and we go to um, you know, the first village we rolled it out at um, Marjoss Gardens down in Albury. We went to the two key um, accredited care providers in that market. We mentioned that we've got 50 residents in a village here. We'll help you fill in the paperwork. We'll give you an office. And instead of driving through Laverton, Albury, Wodonga to go and deliver the care packages, there's 30 residents in our village here. And uh, we don't charge our residents for that service. And it's been uh, instrumental to, to growing occupancy. So. Um, I mentioned that if we built a traditional rental retirement village, we'd be lucky to get a 6 or 7% return on, on capital. 
we are now looking at using modular housing to build our rental village business. Our rent business that we, um, oh, sorry, the last village that we bought in Brisbane uh, called Chambers Pines uh, Village, um, it actually has 151 prefab rental units and um, that's an all age community and that's a model that we're going to be looking to implement in other sites. It's a quite a low priority for us, but we think the demand for affordable rental accommodation is massive. Um, there's basically no new rental villages being built across Australia. I think the last one was built in Bunbury in Western Australia with government funding three or four years ago. So that's a future direction that Ingenia is looking at. And by using that modular housing, we should be able to achieve greater than a 15% return on our capital. I mentioned Ingenia Care Assist, which has been led by Janine. Uh, today we have over 300 residents and we're getting new residents every week. So that's been a great catalyst for us. And as I said, we don't charge our residents for that. We help fill in the paperwork. Um, we frequently run seminars for the residents and their family. So, you know, to, to navigate accessing a, a care package or even, you know, through the CDC that's coming in is very challenging. And, and so Janine and her team regularly run forums for our residents and their families, you know, showing them how we can uh, help them access that care. For Ingenia, the payoff is that you know, we get typically an extra six or 12 months occupancy out of residents who might otherwise have to move into a care facility. Um, last year, I, I went over to the US for two weeks to have a look at the manufactured home park sector over there. Um, Ingenia has uh, got no interest in expanding into the US. I think that's generally a graveyard for Australian companies that go over there. But some of the key observations, um, and Chris has probably shared some of this data with you before, you know, there's 50,000 manufactured home communities in the US and 6% six, um, 6 of the entire population of America lives in a manufactured home community. A lot of them are, are more like trailer parks that we might see in an M&M video, but it's a very large, well-accepted model. Um, and then uh, I think just a, a couple more statistics there. I mean. You know, what was really telling to me is that 20% of all US households survive on less than $20,000 a year. Um, the social net safety net that we have in Australia really doesn't exist over there. And so for a lot of you know, younger families, all they can afford is manufactured housing as a lifestyle. So in Australia, you know, virtually every manufactured housing community is, is almost exclusively for seniors. Um, in America, it's very much all ages communities. Um, down the bottom there, um, I went to uh, a factory in Kentucky that was uh, owned by Warren Buffett. So 10 years ago, Warren Buffett, um, the Oracle of Omaha, bought the largest builder of manufactured homes in the US, a, a company called Clayton Homes. Um, I actually caught up for lunch with Jim Clayton when I was over there and he showed me how they can build a five bedroom, uh, three bathroom home in two days. And, and it's really like building a car with you know, complete automation. In Australia, um, it's probably five weeks if, we're, if we get a good run at it. Um, I think the really interesting thing about that company that I spoke about that Warren Buffett bought, Clayton Homes, is that business makes about $250 million a year. Two thirds of that comes from finance. So it's either funding the resident into their new manufactured home or providing working capital to park owners to fund the expansion and redevelopment of their park. So it's you know, very much like um, General Motors where they make more money out of consumer finance than they do out of actually building and selling the car. Um, <clears throat> this is a, just a quick statistics. Um, quite often in the paper we read about you know, this massive roll up of caravan parks and where are seniors or grey nomads gonna, gonna go and stay. Um, if we look across the three sectors you know, spanning seniors living in aged care, the top 10 operators own about 23% of all beds in Australia. If you strip out of that, the, those owned by government and the you know, church and charitable not-for-profit groups, the top 10 operators own 36% of all aged care beds in Australia. In def deferred management fee villages, which you know, in junior has eight, um, you know, our data would suggest that the top six operators own 29% of all units. And in the lifestyle park sector, manufactured home communities, the top 10 operators own less than 5% of the whole market. So I was at Ingenia back, uh, sorry, at Avum, um, which is now part of Stockland. 
I was back there in 2003 when the Macquaries, the Babcocks started coming through and uh, gobbling everything up. Um, uh, we're probably 10 years behind even that point in time in, in terms of where this industry is in, in consolidation. Um, in junior, we're you know, intending to, to lead that consolidation. We're very well capitalised. Um, before we bought our first park, we went and put together a database of every single caravan park across Australia. We know who owns it, when they bought it, what they paid for it, the land size, and that's driving our acquisition strategy. So we don't tend to use uh, agents in the sector, although um, I'm sure Phil and Shane at Colliers, they, if they get some listings, we're certainly happy to have a chat to them, but we drive our internal deal flow. Um, this is really the, the evolution, evolution of manufactured homes. Um, basically in the 1950s, uh, people did uh, basically start living in a caravan, in a caravan park, mainly men. They'd have their tinny next door. Um, 20, 25 years ago, we started moving to that product type in the middle and, and we still have that style of product at a lot of our villages, communities today. And then on the right there, that's um, the quality and architectural design of the homes that we provide today. Um, we're selling those homes. Um, our cheapest price point would be $180,000, which would be for a two bedroom, one bathroom home in Albury. Internal square meterage of about 80 square meters plus a deck and a carport. Our most expensive home to date has been $360,000, which is on the New South Wales Central Coast. That's a three bedroom, two bathroom about 115 square metres internally, plus a garage and a, a large deck. Our weighted average price would be about $280,000. Um, just very quickly, and um, you know, in this model, the senior owns the above ground home and we retain the freehold free ownership of the land. Um, we sell them the home, they can't bring in their own home, so they've either got to buy a brand new home from us or buy a second hand home from someone in the park uh, we charge them a grounds lease, which is around $150 a week rent. Unlike retirement villages, you are allowed to make a, a profit on that, and our operating margin on that would be about 60%. So of that $150 a week rent we're collecting, our profit margin on that would be about 60%. For a larger village, um, it can be a lot higher. For a, a smaller village or a development village, uh, it can be less than that. For that $150, um, we have exactly like a DMF village, we have on-site village manager, we maintain the grounds, we have a community facility um, and we pay the, the rates. The key difference is that we're not responsible for any maintenance relating to the residents' home. So all we have to look after is the community facilities, roads and gardens. So there is quite a, a big cost saving there. Um, the resident pays for that rent through getting the pension and um, if they're on the full pension, they can also access the Commonwealth rent assistance, and that would contribute on average about $60 a week towards the $150 a week that we collect from the resident. Um, our portfolio across Australia today, uh, we have 20 uh, what we call active lifestyle estates, which is our manufactured home communities. We've got another 10 communities at the moment in advanced uh, due diligence or price discovery. Um, we're the largest owner and operator of parks in New South Wales. So we have 1,360 permanent sites, which is basically a senior living in a manufactured home paying us a weekly rent. We have 1,500 short-term sites, and that is uh, tourism accommodation and short-term rental accommodation. And we've got over 1,000 development sites, and that's just in our parks business. I'll just quickly touch on strategy. Um, when Ingenia bought our first park, which was in February 2013, um, we really didn't want to be playing in the tourism space. Across Australia, there's about 2,500 parks. There's about 130 of those are pure manufactured homes. And the balance are, are what we would call a mixed use park. And these are basically caravan parks that have got a blend of permanent living and tourism. So rather than compete with three other groups for the 130 pure MH, we've deliberately scaled up our tourism um, uh, bench strength in the terms of the way we run the business and you know, we're targeting those mixed-use parks. Initially, our focus with buying a mixed-use park was as quickly as we could, we're looking to convert that tourism into more permanent homes. But as we've started to understand the business a lot more, we've actually realised that in half of the parks that we own, that tourism actually makes a lot more money than seniors living. Um, and so 
in, in certain parks, like we, um, we're the largest owner of caravan parks in Sydney, uh, and there's only a couple left. Um, we're typically getting rid of tourism. Um, our caravan parks in Sydney are normally in Western Sydney, so there's not too much demand for tourism accommodation in a, in a market like Marsden. Um, so we're getting rid of tourism and we're converting it 100% to residential parks. On the other hand, there's parks that we own on the coast, um, north of Newcastle or at Nambucca Heads, um, where uh, reinvesting in tourism actually gives us a much higher return on our capital than converting it across to seniors living. Um, so this is, um, you know, our, our tourism brand is called Active Holiday Parks. Um, broadly speaking, our tourism business is three markets. 50% is young families with kids, 25% um, is grey nomads or active seniors, and 25% is empty nesters or um, you know, quite a, a young market. Uh, two weeks ago, I was doing due diligence at a park up near um, Port Stephens, and I like to stay in the park with my kids before we uh, move to, um, to, to buying it, and I bumped into um, the uh, lead audit partner in New South Wales from one of the big four accounting firms, and. I was talking to Doug and I said, oh, what are you doing here? Because obviously he could afford a much better level of accommodation. And he said, oh, my kids love it here and we come here for a week every year. And that's really the, the market that you know, we're focusing at in terms of those young families. Um, one of the initiatives that we're rolling out right now is that every senior who buys into one of our manufactured home communities gets an active holiday park gold card. And that gives them 25% off tourism accommodation at any of our parks at any time of the year except for Christmas and Easter. So it's pretty easy to fill up a tourism park in Christmas or Easter or school holidays, but for the other nine months of the year, which is off peak or shoulder, if we can start driving um, our existing seniors who often have a, a lot of time on their hands but are, are quite frugal, if we can offer them and their family, because it extends to their broader family, 25% off our best rate, then we think we'll be able to drive a lot of traffic through our off peak and shoulder um, you know, slower times in our tourism parks. So we're rolling out that gold card at the moment. We've also extended that same privilege to our 4,200 in junior shareholders. Uh, this is uh, where the homes get built. Um, we, we don't build the homes ourselves, but this is, uh, we use two companies. This is um, Glendale. This is their manufacturing lot up in uh, Caboolture, just north of Brisbane. And they can produce about uh, 160 homes per annum. And we would be their largest customer at the moment um, you know, by far, and it takes about five weeks for those homes to, to work through the factory, and then they get trucked in two pieces out to our parks. Um, this is the low-risk capitalite development model. Um, so we start with the land. We might order one or two spec homes at a time. We get the homes built off-site in a factory. They get delivered to a site on, tr on a truck, and they either get craned in or with a forklift. They get basically stitched together, and, and then in... Um, between 10 to 12 weeks from the time we decide to start building, um, the home's ready for occupation. The beauty of this model is that, as we would all know, when you're developing new DMF homes, and, and we're doing that at the moment in, in the Hunter Valley, to get efficiencies from the builder, you really need to build 15 or 20 homes at a time. Or if you're doing medium density resi, it's got to probably 60 or 80 homes. With this, we're getting the efficiencies because the offsite builder is combining our orders with his other orders and he's got all the tradies working um, you know, typically 12 hours a day uh, in a covered workshop, so there's no lost time for, uh, for rain and so on. So it's a very efficient production model. Um, this is, our business is rapidly expanding. Um, you know, a year ago, we only had 10 properties that we owned. As at 31 December, we had 16. That's now 21. Um, 12 months ago, we only had two properties in development mode. We've now got nine. Um, and 12 months ago we had six homes under construction and presently we have, uh, this was from our December results, but as of today we've got 68 homes either being built in the factory or being stitched together on site. So our business is rapidly expanding. Uh, this is one of our homes out at Stony Creek Estate. So we bought a very rundown caravan park in Western Sydney. Um, we renamed it Stony Creek. It was formerly called Town and Country. I don't think it had had a dollar spent on it in about 15 years. Um, so we've uh, recently sold that home there for $295,000. Uh, it cost us fully delivered and installed about $160,000. So it's a very profitable development margin. And then when the resident moves into this park, they're paying, because it's in Sydney, it's $169 a week ground lease rent. 
and we've got in this site here the ability to bring in about 145 new homes. Um, we've got our uh, formal open day is uh, happening tomorrow, so there's a, a mad scramble at the moment to uh, to get the uh, the site ready um, for tomorrow. Um, you can sort of see on the uh, on the left side there is is what it looked like before we bought it. Um, you know, a nice treed park, plenty of caravans. Most of those caravans, that's where people actually uh, lived in. Um, and now we're moving to you know, the streetscape there, you can see on the left. Um, what I'd like to say is that, you know, what do we do with the existing residents who live in older style homes? Um, we don't ever evict anybody. So um, we would uh, either look to buy back older homes or we might relocate residents to different parts of the park or we'll build a streetscape around them. So we're certainly aware that there are other operators out there who um, maybe, uh, you know, don't approach it in that way, but, um, you know, as a, an ethical company, notwithstanding we're, you know, listed on the stock exchange, um, we really want to be a long-term owner operator um, of these communities. Um, and so that's the way that we, you know, we work with our existing residents. Um, the last slide I've got is building institutional support. Um, since May 2013, Ingenia's raised over $170 million of new equity. Um, for investment in the lifestyle park sector. Um, I can remember in May um, 2013, about two weeks before we did our first capital raising, I hired a bus, took 60 Sydney fund managers up to our first acquisition, and most of them didn't even know what a manufactured home community was. They, they loved the thematic of seniors living, but they, they thought the only product out there was either DMF villages or the former village life, village death rental villages. And, and when we showed them, there was this entire new asset class out there for seniors living. Um, I think our stock price went up five or six cents that afternoon after we showed the fund managers. But we have a, a very experienced full-time investor relations manager, uh, Donna. She used to work in the same role, heading up investor relations at GPT, which is a, I think a, an $8 billion company. She now heads up our investor relations strategy and her and I spend a, a huge amount of time on the road uh, travelling. As Chris said last time, last year, uh, I went to Asia five times. Um, and as a result of that, we now have the world's largest property fund manager called Cohen and Steers. They're our largest shareholder. They have 47 billion US dollars of property funds under management. Uh, it took six meetings before they bought one share in Ingenia, but now they own close to 10% of the company and they're very, um, they're very supportive investors. Um, and you know, we've also got <coughs> uh, AMP, uh, they would be one of our largest shareholders, and Resolution Capital, which is one of the largest Australian um, property fund managers, uh, you know, they're also one of our largest shareholders. Um, so in the last six months, I've personally done over 55 investor relations meetings, and that's basically sitting in a, uh, either a podium like this or more often sitting around a boardroom uh, in, in their offices and, and spending half an hour, an hour delivering the same message about this is our results, this is our strategy, this is the market opportunity. Um, I can assure you that uh, starting at eight in the morning and finishing at six or seven at night, it's very hard to deliver the same presentation 10 times with the same enthusiasm. You, by the end of the day, you forget what questions you've been asked. Um, it's very difficult and, and quite often, you know, you're in a different city, so the brokers want to take you out for dinner the night before. So it's, uh, it's a, it can be quite tiring. Um, it's probably harder for Donna though, because she's got to listen to me prattle on with the same presentation eight or nine times in a day. But you know, we do make a very significant investment into investor relations and um, you know, that's how we've really built the awareness of this sector um, amongst institutional investors. I think um, you know, in closing, it, it is very important to note that Ingenia hasn't in any way created this sector. Um, there's been other operators who have been in it for a, you know, much longer time. James Kelly down in, in Melbourne with Lifestyle Communities. Um, you know, he's been doing it for over 10 years. It's just really we've brought the weight of institutional uh, capital behind us and the existing management team that runs our rental villages and DMF. They also run our parks. Uh, Corrie, our general manager of uh, operations, is here today. Um, so it's the same management team, but I think Ingenia is very well positioned in terms of we've got capital, we've got a, 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 an existing management platform and we've got our in-house proprietary database which leads our acquisition uh, deal flow. So thank you very much. Thank you.